So it's autumn time right now, and that means it's time for dormancy. Hello and welcome back to the Flytrap Garden. In today's video, we will be looking at Venus flytrap dormancy, and that's a subject that not many people actually know about. So there's about three main things that you need to look at when you put your Venus flytrap into dormancy, and we will cover these three things today. Firstly, you may be confused as to what dormancy even is. Essentially, dormancy is when your plant goes to sleep in winter because, you know, it's tired, it's been a long summer, it's been actively catching all these plants, and it just wants some time to rest and go to sleep, gives the kids to a nanny and they can look after them. And essentially they go to sleep for about three to six months, depending where you are in the world. If you're in warmer climates, such as Australia, they will go to sleep um, for max three months because it's really not that cold here. But if you're somewhere such as the UK, they may be in dormancy for about four to five months. The colder it is, the longer the dormancy, the warmer, the shorter the dormancy. So let's just jump straight into it. There are three factors that you have to take into account when you want to put your Venus flytrap into dormancy. And these three factors are temperature, light, and watering. As you can see, this is our Venus flytrap. It's looking okay, but it is going dormant. You can tell it's going dormant uh, when all of these leaves start to go black and they start dying like, like you can obviously see here. We have lots of these small little traps but you don't see any or many new traps like that one right there that's the only new developing trap that we can see and that shows that the plant is slowing down not making new traps all the old traps are dying and this means that it's going dormant you know it's dormancy and not getting sick because obviously it's becoming autumn slash fall if you're american and essentially this is what your plant will start to look like in some places if it's super cold all the leaves will die off and it will go completely black on the top and that's mainly for the much colder climates here in australia i expect the plants to stay with some green leaves on top because it is warmer but this will be my first dormancy here in australia so let's start looking at those three factors i spoke about so firstly let's look at lighting for these guys my plants grow outside and they get about eight hours of sunlight in winter which is well basically autumn right now they still get about eight hours of direct sunlight and essentially what i'm trying to say by this is that you mustn't move your plants from outside if they're living outside leave them outside they will slowly go dormant by themselves uh, because what happens is that in winter time naturally there's less sunlight and that is called a photoperiod so the photoperiod has decreased and the plants pick up on that and they realize, hey, there's less sunlight, it means it's becoming winter, it's time for us to go to sleep, send the kids off to the nanny and we can just relax and sleep or hibernate, you know, just like a bear would. If you're living in a very cold climate, like let's say North Scotland, somewhere like super, super cold, or Canada, like where the day temperatures are still below freezing, do not leave them outside. Then you want to bring your plants inside, put them in an unheated room or in the basement, somewhere that it stays very cold, but that it is more than freezing. If your plants constantly receives less than freezing temperatures, what happens is that the media and the water in the media freezes and unfreezes and freezes and unfreezes. And this kills the rhizome of the plant because when freezing the water molecules basically make little sharp edges and it will puncture the rhizome and it, and it just it kills the plant so be very careful with that but if you're staying in a, in a climate where the winters are more than zero degrees celsius then it is perfectly fine to leave your plants outside and i actually do recommend that it's best to look at where you are living in the world and if you aren't very sure about your dormancy requirements you can always check online or you can send me a message and I'll be happy to help you. Now, this is slightly different if you're living in a climate which is more tropical. For example, I have some plant friends who live in India and the Philippines and those places, they are obviously always warm and tropical and that is quite difficult to grow a Venus flytrap because obviously they don't really get a winter and it doesn't really get that cold and the photoperiod doesn't change much. What I would suggest for you 
is that you still leave your plants outside. When your winter season comes around and it gets a little tiny bit colder, you may notice your plants start to regress. When you see that, bring your plant inside so it gets less sunlight. What you then need to do is that you should either put your pots like this with a Ziploc bag and put it in the fridge in the lettuce straw, the fruit and vegetable drawer, whatever. You put it in there and you literally leave it in the fridge for about four weeks and that will give it a dormancy. Now I am very bad with fridge dormancies because I've never done it before, but this is what I read up on and this is what I've heard and this is what I know about. If you're living somewhere with no winter, when it should be winter time, bring it inside, put it in a Ziploc bag with the pot like this, put it into the drawers for four weeks. You can also unpot your plant, take it out, take the soil off, or you can leave some soil. It's actually recommended to leave a little bit of soil so it can stay humid in the bag. Put them in the bag, uh, close the Ziploc and put it into the fridge as well for four weeks. And then after the four weeks, take them out because you know, basically after four weeks, it's, it's, it's coming into spring slash summer again if you're in a tropical place. So you take them out, put them back up and put them straight back outside. And if you need more help with fridge dormancies, as I said, do some research online or you can message me, I'll be happy to help. Now this kind of ties back in with what I've been saying. I was talking about sunlight and temperature. As I said, they need to experience colder temperatures in winter. So if they're growing actively between 32 Celsius and 20 Celsius in summer, in winter time, they should really be, ex be experiencing 18 degrees Celsius max and down to zero degrees Celsius at night. This would be the recommended um, temperature in this range, which will allow them to stay dormant during winter time. Obviously, as I said, if it's too cold, be careful. And if it's too warm, use the fridge method. And also, Remember that if you are keeping them outside, leave them where they're growing and they'll go dormant naturally. You don't have to worry about reducing the amount of sunlight that they have if they're living outside because that becomes really difficult to actually track and nearly impossible to make less sunlight if they're living outside. So as I said, don't really worry about that too much. So next up, you have to look at watering. In summer, they are actively growing. They are growing a lot. They're using a lot of water. It's very warm. So obviously in summertime, we have quite deep water trays for our carnivorous plants so they can use as much water as they want. However, in winter time, as I've said, they go to sleep. They don't need as much water. So obviously they will not require as much water that you would usually give them in summertime. So what you should do in winter time with watering is that when you have them in the water tray and you watch the water deplete, usually you would wait about one to three days before rewatering their tray again in summertime. Well now in winter time, you should really leave about three to about a week, depending on how cold your temperatures are. The best way to really tell that I've experienced is that you can look at the media. So this is just peat and some sand in this mix. And you notice that the top of this plant here, you can see how dark the peat is. And that shows that the peat is really hydrated and that they have enough water to last them about two to three days without having you to add more water into the tray. But in winter time, obviously because it's much cooler, it takes longer for the water in the peat to evaporate. So this means that if you are watching the peat, you should be able to tell when they need to be watered again. Now, as I say, this may be a little bit tricky, but you need to just know your plants and understand when you should water them. Monitor them if you see that in one day that they need more water and it's winter time, water them again. Don't be scared to water them. Just know that they take a little bit less water than what they do in summer. Another thing that you can do is that instead of giving them super deep water trays like you would in summer, give them about half the amount of water that you, that you would give them in summer. This means that they're getting less water, but you can still top water their trays like you usually would if it were summer. And by that, I mean, instead of waiting three to seven days, you can still water them within one to three days of the tray being empty. And that covers the three basic things that we need to worry about during dormancy. But I will talk a little bit about some extra facts. In winter time, their traps will become much slower than in summertime. And in some cases, they may not even close at all. Now, I'm not sure the real reasons why they become so slow and inactive like this in dormancy. People don't really know why they need the dormancy, but just know that the traps become super slow and don't be disheartened if you see that you try to feed your plants or you see that there is an insect in the trap and it doesn't close. This is very normal during their dormancy time 
and there's nothing to be worried about. Another great tip about winter time and dormancy is that it's the best time to repot your Venus flower traps because they are sleeping at this point, they are inactive, any root disturbances, disturbances, disturbances will be felt less than if you had to do it during their growing season in spring and summer. So in the middle of winter or very early spring, that is the best time possible that you can repot your Venus flytraps and even other plants such as Saracenia. Take them out of the old media, separate them, or you don't have to separate them either, and then put them with new soil in a new pot and they won't even realize it. So by the time springtime comes around, they can just start growing without even having to worry or stress about being in a brand new environment. Another tip about growing your Venus flytraps is that obviously, as I've been talking about, they go dormant in winter. And this means you have nothing to grow during winter. So what you should do is that you should get more carnivorous plants. Winter growers. There are South African Drosera species which grow in winter, as well as tuberous Drosera, Drosera that all grow actively during winter and go to sleep in summer. We actually have some tuberous Drosera in our collection that are growing now really, really well. And what this means is that you are not gonna be bored during winter time and you actually have some other plants to look after while these guys go to sleep. And now our last tip about dormancy, not really so much dormancy, but around springtime reemergence of the plant is that they will most probably make a flower stalk. Now, you may be confused as to what is a flower stalk and what is a trap. Many people think that these traps are flowers. So the answer to that is obviously no, these traps are not flowers because they don't make seeds, they trap insects. These are just modified leaves. The flowers of the Venus flytrap is a, like a little stalk that literally just shoots up like a rocket straight out the middle and it's very, very different to the traps. When you see this, the best thing to do if you don't want seeds is to cut it off and stick that flower back in the ground so that you have the chance of making a new Venus flower trap from that flower. The reason why I tell you to cut off the flower is simply because the flower takes a lot of energy out of the plant and it may, in some cases, kill your Venus flower trap because it's putting all of its energy into making a flower instead of growing. I hope this was informative for you guys and I hope to see you next time. Bye.